Okay, folks, so we are going to work with uh, interfaces and how interfaces uh, apply to inheritance, um, which puts them in this in this series of videos. Uh, so first off, what is, what is an interface? Uh, well, an inter interface is a way to force behaviors on a class. Um, and so you might, you know, be coming from the last video and you say, well, wait a minute, doesn't an abstract method force behaviors? Well, that is, that is correct. An abstract method does force behaviors. However, an interface is a single, uh, an interface is a single entity that has a, a bunch uh, or several uh, potential behaviors that it's going to force. And, and so where an abstract method is a single behavior that is enforced, an interface could have two or three or ten behaviors that it forces. Uh, and additionally, an interface uh, is its own entity in that I can go into uh, this drop-down list here and, and it's like a class, you know, in that it's its own uh, file. And so we, I might have an interface that uh, we'll just call uh, the interface I, you know, the I representing the interface. Uh, and for this demonstration, we'll say attack. Okay, so this attack interface is going to have several different, um, like it's a video game, right? So uh, several different attacks that you might implement on a particular type of um, creature okay so let's let's let me demonstrate that a little bit so now you see we've created an interface it's not public class it's public interface called I attack now uh, a few other things about interfaces uh, they cannot cannot be instantiated so very similar to an abstract class, you cannot instantiate an abstract class, you cannot instantiate an interface. Uh, and again, you're going to, uh, the methods of an interface must be uh, written uh, in the classes that implement and implement you implement interfaces implement that interface okay so let me let me uh, give an example uh, now an interface is going to include several abstract methods and that's really you're not going to to put the method bodies inside of the interface all you're going to say is hey this is a method that you're going to force to be overridden in a child so uh, I know a lot of video games um, have uh, attacks like uh, there's an attack when you press when you press uh, Q. There's another attack when you press W. There's another attack when you press E. Okay, and um, those you know are, are video games and depending on the character you might have a different Q or a different W a different E a different R that the different characters have different uh, attacks that they do when they press these different abilities however by creating an I attack interface and by using that interface you can make sure that every character has a Q attack has a W attack an E or an R etc etc so that's our example that we're going to go um, so let me go ahead and implement these abstract methods, and because we know what an abstract method is now, uh, we're going to have a public method uh, that is going to return, let's just say, a, sh a string uh, called qattack. And we're going to mark this as abstract. That's not... And we'll make the same one for the w... E, 
and R. Okay, so now we have an interface. It has four abstract methods. And when we create a class uh, that implements this interface, it's going to force us to write the bodies for these uh, classes. So let me go ahead. You can even see over here with the I attack uh, interface, it, it has a different symbol uh, representing interface, not a class. And so let's go ahead and create a new class, and we'll just say our, uh, you know, just going off of the kind of the video game theme here, we're, we're going to create our warrior, right? And so we have public class warrior, and now this warrior is going to implement our I attack interface and, and uh, implements is plural. The keyword is plural. And you could see now the type warrior must implement the inherited abstract methods. So let's go ahead and implement. And there you could see this could, just by implementing this interface is going to force us to override these methods. And our warrior's Q attack will return smash. And uh, the W attack will return uh, you know, and you could you could return you know some amount of damage, right? Smash one damage, and the W attack will uh, toss for two damage. And it's just forcing us to write these methods, right? So we'll return the E will um, we got smash toss bash for four damage. And uh, his his ultimate or his R attack will return a um, area of effect, um, whatever big damage, big eight damage. And so you can see how an interface, when you implement an interface, is going to force us to implement the bodies of those methods uh, that we declared in the iAttack uh, interface. And uh, just to continue our demonstration, you know, you, you can have a class that implements multiple interfaces versus, you know, when we're saying inheritance, you can only have one parent, right? Cat extends animal. You cannot extend multiple parent classes. However, uh, you can have multiple interfaces. So a warrior uh, can implement the attack interface, but let's go ahead and let's say a warrior also has, uh, uh, let's just say a uh, interface for defense, right? So there's I attack, there's also I defend right and the theory here is that um, maybe the G uh, button uh, is used for defense and so in keeping our um, same uh, logic here we could say the G G defend Right, and that's our abstract method instead of inside of I defend. And if we want all of our uh, characters to to at least have one sort of defense when you press the the G button um, inside of our class warrior, we'll put comma I defend. And now you can see it's going to force us to write that method, the G defend method. Right, so we'll say public string g defend and override uh, the, the method inside of the interface and we're going to return uh, let's just say you are healed by 10 points you are healed by 10 points and you can see that that does, in fact, uh, implement the correct method. And now we have a method for warrior. So you can implement multiple interfaces where you cannot extend.
Oh, you cannot extend from multiple parents. The uh, so that's that's a good overview of interfaces. The next concept is uh, how how do fields uh, inside of interfaces work? And so if we go into our attack interface, um, if we were to write a a field, um, let's just say an integer uh, called damage. Um, now there's there's a few things you need to know about fields inside of interfaces. Number one um, is that they are treated as final and static, meaning uh, because they're final, you know, the, the convention is all capitals, and you you give them an initial value. So uh, damage uh, is automatically final and is automatically. Uh, static, which means it's shared, right? It's a shared field amongst all classes that implement I attack. And so it's only stored in memory one time. Uh, so there's an automatic or implicit, you know, final static, final static in, final static. You know, whether you type it or not, this is what it is. And uh, what that means is that any of the classes that implement your interface have access to this field. Uh, and so um, you might say, instead of smashing for one damage, you could say smash for plus and the field was DMG. Uh, right, so now this will say smash for one damage, um, and you could use this field in each one of your methods, right? So you could say toss for two damage you know and you could use these fields however you want you could create more fields so the the default Q attack has one but you know you might have you know uh, Q damage is equal to one W damage is equal to two and so forth and so you can use these Q damage and W damage and because they're final, you know, you can't change them, so they're it's okay to Q damage. Okay, there we go. I just had to catch up. The compiler had to catch up. I guess I went a little too fast for it. Um, and so you could see how you use fields inside of an interface. Remember that whether you type it or not, they are automatically final and static. Meaning, you know, again, going back to what that means, you can't change it, you can't go over here just because you can access it, you can't change it to something else, right? It's marked as final, you cannot change it. Now the last uh, concept in our demonstration uh, would talked about field and interfaces. Check interfaces in UML. Uh, so how are interfaces represented in a diagram, uh, in a unified modeling language diagram? And I went ahead and uh, drew one up real quick. Um, in this case, the solid line represents inheritance. So final exam would extend graded activity. Right, so this is a child and this is a parent. Uh, and interface is typically represented by a dashed line uh, with an arrow. Uh, means that this relatable is the interface uh, that is implemented by final exam three. So uh, here's a simple demonstration, a, a dashed line with an arrow. Uh, means that it is an interface. Uh, so that brings us to the end of this video where we talked about interfaces, fields inside of interfaces, and interfaces inside of UML.